Although Wireshark can't directly decode AES67 streams, it does have some features that allow you to easily put the data into a format that can be read by other software, such as Audacity. Today, I want to show you how to capture, read, and process that data so you can play back an AES67 stream from your network. Here I have a QSIS core set up with an AES67 transmitter. On the first two channels I have an audio player with some royalty free music. The third channel is a pink noise generator, the fourth a sign generator, and channel 5 is blank. We're going to use that for silence. I will go ahead and send this to the core. And before the core is able to complete sending it, once the design is working on starting, we'll go ahead and start our Wireshark capture. As the data comes in, you can see it started off as UDP and changed to RTP. What happens is when the SDP packet comes in, Wireshark then recognizes this as RTP data. So we'll let that capture for a few seconds and I'll make sure that my audio is actually playing here. And once we're good, we'll go ahead and stop the capture. Now that our capture is complete, we'll go ahead and click one of our RTP packets. We'll go up to telephony, RTP, and the RTP player. You'll notice in the player, there's no audio data up here, and we only see one channel. This is because Wireshark doesn't have the ability to decode this data. So what we're going to do is select our stream here. We'll go to export, payload, and we're going to go ahead and save this file. So now that we have our data exported, we go back into Wireshark here, and what we're going to do is we're going to look for the SDP packet. Now this packet is going to tell us a couple of important pieces of information. We've got L24, so this is a signed 24-bit PCM audio. We have 48 kilohertz sample rate, and we have five channels. So we'll go ahead and open up Audacity here. In Audacity, we're going to go to File, Import Raw Data. We're going to select the file we just made. Go ahead and open it up. We're going to choose our signed 24-bit PCM. Now, byte order for this is always going to be Big Endian. We're going to select 5 channels and 48 kilohertz. Import our data, and you can see our media player shows up on the first two channels. It started playing a little late, so it's all the way over here. We've got our pink noise on the third channel, sine wave on the fourth, and on the fifth channel is all silence. Hopefully one day Wireshark will have the ability to process AES67 audio directly inside the program, but for now, this is a fairly easy way to do it. Now with this method, you'll be able to see what the content of your AES67 streams is, but you won't be able to tell if, say, a packet were to arrive too late. What we can do to help with that is go back into Wireshark. With one of our RTP packets selected, we can go to Telephony, RTP, Stream Analysis, and we can see all the information for all the packets in these stream. If we click our delta column twice, you can see our largest time delta here is 1.48 milliseconds. So with a 2 millisecond buffer on the receiving end, all the packets here would arrive on time. However, if we only had a 1 millisecond buffer, well, you can see there's quite a few packets here that wouldn't make it on time. So I hope you enjoyed this quick lesson on utilizing Wireshark and Audacity to capture and listen to AES67 streams. Thanks for watching.